everybody. Welcome to another episode of Crafting with Christina for Two Scrapbook Friends. So today we are going to be making this card. So I'm just calling it the Celebrate card. So the few things that we're going to be using for this, we'll start going through my big pile here. <laughs> First thing, everything we're doing is from the Hero Arts. So we're going to be using this stamp set. I'm just going to pull this out here. Um, this stamp set is called Number Candles. And today I'm actually not going to be using the numbers, but I'm going to be using the Celebrate sentiment from here. So we're going to be using the sentiment from that. We are going to be using the stamp and die, which I already have the dies pulled out here. We're going to be using this balloon set here. Um, and that's called the Bunches of Balloons, the stamp and die. So we're going to be using that. Put that off to the side here. And um, we're actually going to be also from Hero Arts. We're going to be using this stencil. And this stencil is called the streamer stencil. So this is the stencil that we're going to be using as well today. If you choose to, um, the optional thing that I have on here, I'll hold this up. So again, if you need to pause this um, and get everything together here, you can. The optional is the Lawn Fawn Large Stitched Rectangle Stackables. So this is the largest one from there. This is the same, um, so when you're cutting out your background, this is your A2 card size here, because this is 4.25 by 5.5. So if you look at the card here, that has all the stitching on the edges of the card. If you don't have this, then that's no big deal. You can cut out your background to the right size when we get to that point. So little things you're gonna need are um, score tape or liquid glue to glue everything down here, as well as foam squares. And I forgot to write that down here, but that's okay. Uh, 110 pound Nina white cardstock for your card base. That's what we use for our card bases all the time. Either the Vicky Booten, I forgot the I, <laughs> the Vicky Booten foundations paper or Bristol paper for blending. Um, hammer mill paper for all your Copic coloring. You're just going to need some teal or red or whatever color cardstock you want to do your celebrate sign in. Um, your Lawn Fawn jet black ink or anything that's Copic marker friendly because um, we're going to be doing Copics today. We're going to use white embossing powder because we're going to be embossing that Celebrate sign. Um, your anti-static tool, just so when we're doing the embossing, your uh, powder doesn't stick. I have the little baggie in here, so that's what I use. Um, along with your Versamark or any um, stamp pad you're going to use for embossing. The dis I'm going to use Distress Oxides today. So we're going to be doing, you can see this whole background I've done in um, rainbow colors. So if you look at it here, I don't have them quite in order right now, but I'm going to be using candied apple, wilted violet, peacock feathers, mowed lawn, mustard seed, carved pumpkin, and along with all my tailored expressions blending brushes. These are the ones that I have just for my oxides. Um, and you're going to also want, um, I find a lot easier when I'm doing this. I like to use my pixie spray when I'm putting my stencil down. It's a light tack. It's a repositionable adhesive for stencils. So we'll pull that out. Um, and then Copics, I'll move this stuff off to the side here. I am going to be actually using Vicky Booten today and I'll show you this in a moment. Put this all off to the side and the Copics I'm using. So if you want to um, just take a peek at this, you can grab all those ones or any colors you choose um, to use these. You can definitely do that. And then your Misty tool and your die cutting machine. So first things first, let's put this off to the side here. This is the card that we're making. First things first is you want to grab your, um, your 110 pound Nina uh, for your card base. So it comes in an eight and a half by 11 sheet. And all you're going to do is you're going to take that and you're going to slice it in half. And that gives that's going to give you two card bases. So you're just going to take your half of it, fold it over, grab your tool here, push it down, and now you've got your background. So you can just put that off to the side because we're not going to be using that for a little bit. So we'll do our, um, we'll actually do the stenciling first. So today I usually use for um, I usually use the Bristol paper. This is typically what I use, but I thought just for something different, I'm going to show you guys the Vicky uh, Booten Foundations paper. So this 
is what this looks like. They both blend beautifully. Um, so the white foundations paper, and this is a 12 by 12. So I've already cut this down and I'm doing this in a six by six. So what you wanna do is either grab a craft mat or if you have your make art station like I have, then this is what you're going to do and you are also going to grab your stencil. So now we're gonna grab the stencil here and you can see, um, on the front here, you can just see Hero Arts in the corner and the number and stuff, so you know which way. It really doesn't matter which way you do it. So Pixie Spray, you're gonna grab it. You're gonna give it a nice little shake. And all you're gonna do is you're gonna very quickly just go. So this just gives it a little bit of tackiness. Um, I got a fuzz on mine. <laughs> um, it just gives it that little bit of tackiness. So when you put it on your piece of paper, it sticks and you're, it's not going to move around a whole lot. So all you're going to do is just push it down here on your piece of paper. And now it's not going anywhere. It's going to be sticking to your paper and now, um, you are good to go. So I thought it would be fun because I really like this rainbow card. So I thought we would just do it in the rainbow on here as well. So I'm going to start with a red and I'm just going to start up into the corner and you're just going to start and then just start blending. We've got a little bit of red on here. And we're going to go into orange. So again, this one's candied apple. Orange, I'm going to use carved pumpkin. And you're just going to make sure you go over just a little, you know, just a couple lines because you want all, all the colors and stuff to fit. And then like when you're going over your orange, make sure you go into the red a little bit just so that it nicely um, blends together. So orange. Then we've got mustard seed is going to be the next color. So we want red, orange, yellow. So now we're just going to go into the yellow here. And again, make sure you blend that nicely into the orange color. And I'm just cutting, I'm just starting with a six by six piece because that is the size of the stencil. So sometimes I just find that a little bit easier. And then you cut it down to your size after. So we got red, orange, yellow, then green. So the next one I'm gonna be using is Mode Lawn. got green here going down and again you don't have to use the distress oxide these are just colors that I grabbed for now but you can use any ink colors that you choose to and if you don't want to do rainbow color then you don't have to as well too you can use any inks you want with your stencils and I wouldn't worry too much about blending. So long as you don't have any white showing, then once this is pulled off, you don't even, you don't see if it's not perfectly blended. Um, so green and then blue, we're actually gonna go with peacock feathers. So let's grab my teal, kind of bluey teal color. And again, kind of blend that, go over the green at least a little bit, because as I said, you don't want any white um, you don't want any white marks. You want everything to be nicely covered with your stencil. And then last color we're going to go in with is Wilted Violet. Put that brush away and grab my purple brush. And then you're just going to finish off the rest here with purple. Okay, so now your background's done. We'll just move all these colors and brushes off to the side. This is always my favorite part, is taking the stencil off. So once you've taken off your stencil, you have your rainbow background here. So I'm gonna put the stencil away into some water because I'll have to clean that off. And now you've got your background piece. So now you have, I'm just gonna put this away for now. Now you have a couple different choices. So as I said, you can go ahead and cut this down now um, to whatever size you want to do. So or like for your card size. So if you want to do like your standard card size, you're gonna do four and a quarter by five and a half. Um, but what I'm gonna do is actually um, put this through this die cut machine because I like to have all my stitching and stuff on the ends here. So I'm going to figure out exactly where I want to place this. 
And then I always like to use a little bit of tape to hold things down here. Um, actually, so if we did this one, I kind of went into this way. So again, you can do it up and down. You can do it this way. If you want to do it the way that I did there, it doesn't really matter. The stencil goes any way you want. Let's just do it this way just to be different. Okay, so now I'm just going to put this down on here. I just like to hold just a little bit of tape just to hold this down here. And then I'm going to stick this through my Gemini. So I'm going to flip this upside down so that my die cut doesn't cut through my magnet piece. Okay, stick this through here. This is why the Gemini is the best thing in the world. because I don't have to hold on to anything and I don't have to crank anything. I obviously need a new plate because this one is cracking and it's going to break any moment. <laughs> Let's hope it waits till after the live. <laughs> okay, so now you have your piece cut. Or as I said, just use your, um, just use whatever you've got to cut it down to four and a quarter by five and a half. So now you have your background piece. And then I would actually attach your card base right now and then you've got this completely done. So you can use glue if you choose to. I really like using score tape. I just find that I don't ever have to worry about the base or anything coming off and I really like score tape. Once this is down, this card will stay together till the end of time <laughs> or until somebody throws that out, which is a very sad thought. I hope nobody ever throws out cards. <laughs> Okay, and we're going to just take the backing off the score tape here. And then you're figure, going to figure out, do you want it this way? Do you want it this way? However you want it. And then I like to just kind of stick down at the top of my card here, just so that it has a little bit of movement so I can line up this long edge here. So you're going to line it up. And once it's down, you just push it down and now you have your card ready to open. Your card base is now finished. So what we're gonna do next is we are going to get into doing some actual coloring. So now is the time when you want to grab your stamp here. And then if you're following along with me, you're going to be using a Misty. I really like my Misty because then I can, um, if I need to stamp it twice, because if it doesn't go perfect, then you have to sometimes do another stamp and then you're good to go. I just have to cut a piece of my hammer mill paper because I forgot to cut that earlier. So when I do my, um, when I do my Copics, I always use hammer mill. Um, I really like the way that it doesn't bleed. It just, it does, it's beautiful. So I would highly recommend using hammer mill paper when you do anything to do with Copics. And then you have to make sure as well too, so it's always, it's all about paper and about inks. So I use the, um, the Lawn Fawn Jet Black. It's an um, alcohol marker friendly ink. So anything that says that should be good. Um, I just, I am a very big fan of the Lawn Fawn. And then I'm going to use my smoosher tool by Maker Forte, the smoosher. It's really great because you get perfect amount of um, pressure when you're putting it down on your Misty. This smoosher tool is the best. Again, I need to add more ink because it's not dark enough. I know I need a new ink pad. So now I know that I've got that nice and dark so I can clean this off and then I can put my stamp away. And then now that we have the Misty out, before we do the coloring, I'm just going to put this off to the side. Since we already have our Misty out, let's do our sentiment. So now you're just going to grab whatever random piece of color that you want to do for your cardstock here. And you're going to grab the next, the next stamp set out. So. You can use any of the sentiments from the other one or whatever sentiments you want, but I'm gonna grab the celebrate from here. And I'm gonna line this up kind of close to the bottom just so that I know I'm square when I cut this out. 
somewhere around there. And first things first is you are going to pick up your sentiment. Then you want to grab your anti-static tool. So if you stamp this without using your anti-static tool, there's a pretty good chance that anything, whatever the powder puts down, because there's a lot of static in these papers. So if you, um, I like to give it a little blow on there after just to make sure all it's all gone. Um, but then the anti-static takes all the static out of the paper. So when you're going to be using your Versamark, which is what we're coming in with next, you're gonna put Versamark, hopefully I'm in line here. You're gonna put stamp your sentiment with your Versamark or whatever embossing stamp pad you have. You're going to put that down on here. And you can kind of see it, but it's not, um, it's not too noticeable until you actually put the, um, wherever I can find it, my embossing powder down. So I'm gonna put embossing powder over top of the whole thing, shake it off. And now you can see all the powder is just sticking to the celebrate sign and there's no, um, there's nothing sticking to the actual paper. So I'm just gonna put all this stuff aside here. And move that over there. And then I'm just going to clean off my stamp and put that away just so that I don't lose things. And then now what you need is your heat gun. So you're gonna put this aside and you're gonna grab your heat gun now because now we need to make sure that this powder is going to set onto the paper. It basically melts. So I'm gonna hold it up a little bit closer so that you can see, because right now it's just white powder that's sticking to that. Now hopefully you can see that, but it goes to a very shiny, shiny white. So once you've heat that up and it turns all shiny and there's no powder left, you are good to go with this. It's ready to go. I'm just gonna move some of the stuff out of the way here. And now you just wanna grab your cutter whatever you're using to cut because we may as well if you're looking this one I just I kind of just did a little tag here and I just cut it out myself so I'm gonna do a little bit on the edge here I, I like this idea of leaving a little bit of space here as well so I'm just gonna hopefully I'm in line here I'm just gonna move it up and then you can see because now it's dry right because once once it's melted onto the page you are good to go so I'm going to take it and line it up just so that I can see the celebrate again on the top, about the same from the bottom. Slice it across there and now we have our sentiment. And I like to just put the little tag in the end here. So all I'm gonna do, and again, you can go closer if you, if you don't like that and you wanna go a little bit closer. This one's a little bit smaller. Um, you can grab that as well too. Of course, now it's just going to be a little bit harder to do when you put it in here. There we go. Because now there was no paper to hold on to. And then I'm going to make it just a little tag. So all I'm doing is taking my scissors and cutting a little piece in there, cutting a little piece in there. And now I've got my piece ready to put on when I finish coloring. So what you're going to do now is grab the piece that you've already uh, you've already stamped out and now you're just going to grab your colors. So again, you can choose whatever colors you want if you don't want to follow along with me. You can do whatever you want. And you can just color in the balloon with one color. I was just doing a little bit of shading. So, um just so you know, when I use my Copics and do my dark um any of my darker colors, I like to take both lids off. Um, just in case you haven't watched any of my other videos that have that in there before, I like to take both lids off because if it doesn't breathe, sometimes it'll blob out the end and it becomes a very big mess. Nothing's worse than you're trying to uh, color your paper. You get out to the end of it and then it leaves a big blobby mess. So I'm just doing a little bit of shading here and I'm going to come in with my, what am I using here? R29 first. And I'm going to just do the two. I'm just copying this one just to kind of make it the same. So once I have the R29 down, I'm going to grab my R24. And I'm just going to go over all the color that I just did with the 29 and then fill in the rest of the balloon. 
And just make sure you go over the R29 that you did like the darker color first, just so that it blends nicely. It's not as big when you're doing this, um, doing the one here, but. So there's the red. Let's go in with teal next. So I'm gonna use BG15 and BG13. So I always go in with my darker color first. And this one, as I said, I've used this so many times that I'm not really concerned about the color not, uh, the color blobbing on this one. So again, you can go around the whole balloon, you can go around just parts of it, just leave a little bit open here so that you can put the next color in just to give it a little bit of depth. And then same with this. But make sure, I mean, you're more than welcome to color in the triangles or not. I, I left all my, the, um, the triangles and the circles and the other ones, I left them all white. If you choose to color those in using opposite colors and stuff like that, go for it. And then I'm also gonna do this one since I did the other balloon on there. And I just kind of go around the edges and leave some of it for the lighter color here. So again, now I'm gonna be going in with my BG13 and I'm just gonna go over all the balloons. Oh, don't forget to fill in the bottom part of it. So you're just gonna go over everything that you did with a darker color, just to make sure it's all blended in nice. And then go over with your BG13. So let's go in with oranges. So the next one I did was YR18 and YR68. So basically when you're doing this, you just need like a darker color and then a lighter color if you choose to do the two-tone. And if you don't want to, you definitely do not need to. You can just fill them all in with one color. Just make them nice and vibrant since you're doing um, a background that's rainbowy. <laughs> rainbowy, that's my new word. Um, it's just nice to have the balloons all nicely filled in and bright. And then I'm going to go in with my YR68 and go over everything I just did with the darker color just to bring that blending in and add a little bit more of the orange to it. And then fill in the rest. And as I said, I'm not filling in those little triangles, squares, whatever they are. Um, I like to keep that white just to kind of go along with the white background. And then all you're doing is filling in the rest of the balloon here. Go over the darker colors. And that just gives you a little bit of nice shading on there. Um, so yellow. So yellows, I used um, Y19 and Y08. And again, just kind of go around the outside of the balloon here. And leave a little bit of space for the light and then we'll do it on this side as well too so there's the yellow now i'm going to grab the y08 go over everything we just did just to kind of blend it really nice and then add a little bit more make sure all those are filled in and then last color i'm going to use is purple and i am using a v15 and a v12 so again, the darker color goes along the bottom. Just to add a little bit of shading. And this uh, marker is very old or I probably would have taken both <laughs> lids off on this one as well too. But this one's coming towards the end that I'm going to have to replace the new color on it. And refill it. Either refill or get a new marker. I like to refill them and if they don't... Uh, if it's out of stock with the refills, then I just buy a new marker because I can't live without my markers. <laughs> now you've got these all done. So next thing you're gonna do is once these are all colored, you are going to grab your die cut. And you can, it's very, very easy to match up. You can just match all the lines up here and don't have it move like I just did. I just totally moved this. Okay. Just put this on here. And again, just to make sure it for sure does not move, I'm gonna put a little bit more at the top. And then I'm going to grab my Gemini again here. And my plates. 
All right, push this down on here and then put it through the machine. So whatever dye machine you're using. As I said, I love my Gemini because I don't have to do any hand cranking. It's all electronic. <laughs> that all apart take it off your purple tape or your washi tape or whatever you are using just make sure you carefully pull it off because if it's still a little bit wet from the marker sometimes it sticks and you definitely don't want to do that so you just have to be a little bit gentle so now you're going to bring your card base back in and now you're going to use foam dots, foam tape, whatever. You can also just glue it right down to the bottom, whatever, right to the base if you really want to. I like to add a little bit of depth to it. So I use my foam tape quite a lot. As you can see, this roll is starting to get down and it was quite a large roll to start with. I go through a lot of this stuff. I like to have mine stand out a little bit more. So put this on there and I can see that they didn't, I just had to pop out the bottom pieces here because they didn't quite come out. Now for these bottom ones, because they are so small on here, I use these, the micro squares. I really like these micro squares. And then all I do when I do this is I just grab my tweezers and just pull out one micro square at a time. I just find that's very easy to do. Stick one on there just so they just, they still, so that's just not kind of flopping. I don't bother with one on here, but then I just put one on the bottom on there. And then next you're gonna do, it's a lot easier with your tweezers. You're going to take all your pieces of your foam squares off or your foam tape or whatever you're using. These ones I just find easier with just my fingernails. And then move this off to the side. Now you're just going to center this onto your page, onto your card base and your background that you've done. And then with the Celebrate, I actually just grab some, some of the smaller foam squares. You can use foam tape, whatever you want. Just make sure you only put them on the ends because you already have this sticking out. You're just gonna need some on the end so that it's not in the way. And then you're just going to choose wherever you wanna stick your Celebrate sign. And now you have this amazing, bright, beautiful, birthday card to send to and I really like this because it's a unisex card it doesn't matter if it's guys or girls kids adults whatever you want you've got yourself a beautiful birthday card so hopefully you guys had a lot of fun and uh, we'll see you next time bye bye